Good morning. Doesn't it look empty in here? You've got all the corms. I'm so excited. Now, for the butterfly ranunculus, they are very similar to the uh, normal ranunculus, our cut flower ranunculus, except they're supersized. But the whole point of growing something new is to do it together, isn't it? So I'm going to do brand new videos for the butterfly ranunculus so you can follow along exactly. I'm going to start my today and I'll start soaking mine tonight so I'm going to show you every single step so that you will know exactly what to do and we can enjoy growing these beautiful new plants together. So I'm just getting myself all set up and ready for the grow along. So these are my 15 cell trays for the renonculus and anemones. I'm getting them ready ahead of time because I'm finding bags of compost at the moment are very dry. So rather than try and rehydrate the compost once the corms are in them, I have got a gritty compost mix, watered them really well. I'll leave them on the floor overnight because that will slow down the water draining away. That hopefully will rehydrate the compost beautifully. And then tomorrow we don't have to mess about. We can take our soaked corms straight out of their bowls and place them into this lovely, moist, but not crucially soaking wet compost. And over here, these are for the butterfly. These are one litre containers, so much bigger than the 15 cell trays. They've been filled with my gritty compost mix, watered well ahead of time. And I will leave these as well to drain overnight because the very worst thing you can do with your corms is to soak them and then not be ready for planting. If you let them dry out and then re-soak them, you can actually kill the corm. They are a living thing, so you need to be careful. So best thing to do is get yourself all ready and prepared and don't soak your corms until you're ready to deal with them. So this pot is um, just under 11 centimetres across, so 10 and probably a half. And then height wise, it's 12 centimetres. So you can get 11, that'll be fine. Just don't go down as low as nine because it won't be deep enough. We need to just protect the corn from rodents. We don't want them stolen before they have a chance to grow. Now I'm very lucky because I've got rodent proof staging which means there are no legs. It hangs from the greenhouse frame so there's no legs for them to scramble up so I can just literally pop that on the top shelf and leave it to start to wake up. If you've got a bench like this they will scramble up and get in and steal your corn. So you need to be a little bit inventive. This is a propagator with a high dome. The pot's inside. And I'll just pop that over the top. I'll close down the vent just a smidge to start with. And you can open the vent to full once they start shooting. And then if you need something a little bit smaller, they also come in this half tray size as well with a matching high domed propagator. We'll just make sure that that is on nice and securely. There we go, pot is snug inside. And you'll use these propagators over and over again. They are so handy. So if you decide to treat yourself, it won't just be for these rhinoculus corms that you'll be using it. You can see mine is very well worn. And last thing, make sure that on lovely hot sunny days you do take the lid off so the plant can breathe and it doesn't overheat. Because if the soil temperature gets too warm, they won't wake up. If you're really stuck, you can of course start them indoors. Just make sure it's not too warm. Again, because the soil temperature, if it's too warm, they won't wake up. But otherwise, you can start them on your windowsill. Just keep them away from the heating and as soon as you see life, you must bring them outside to the greenhouse, otherwise they'll go leggy and we can't pinch ranunculus. So the last thing you want is leggy butterfly corms. So the high dome propagator is 12 centimetres tall, but don't forget, it's gonna be sitting on top of the seed tray and that is going to be at least seven centimetres. There we go. So you can see that we are just over 17 centimetres tall. So that's plenty tall enough for starting off your ranunculus. 
And then this is the bigger seed tray, it's seven centimetres as well. If I butt it up, you can see exactly the same size. They all tend to be standard sizes. And then I've got two propagators here, and they are literally exactly half the size of the big propagator. So if you've only got a tiny greenhouse or a zippy, these half sizes might actually be better for you. Take up less room, and then you can just use them as and when you need them. And then just for completeness, these are the quarter size trays that I like for sowing seeds into. So I find these a bit too big, a bit too many seeds, and it's difficult to uh, make sure that they stay in their own side. <laughs> you might as well use um, cells for that. So otherwise, if I want lots of the same variety seeds, then I will use one of these quarter size seed trays. I'm not using the lids at the moment because it's plenty warm enough in the greenhouse, but I just put them on so that you could see exactly what they look like. Let's get myself all organised. It's so exciting. So I've got my corns that I would like to soak, but what I've also done is printed out the corresponding pages from the handbook for each of the products. So we've got our inoculus here, our anemones here, and our butterflies. So you can do the same. Just print out the page that you need for starting the corns. Now the normal inoculus, they only take three or four hours, so that's easy. We can put those in to soak in the morning. Once I make my cup of tea in the morning, I'll have the bowls ready and I'll pop those in to soak. However, the anemones and the butterfly both need a bit longer. So what I like to do is put those in to soak before I go to bed. And then by about mid-morning to lunchtime, they'll all be rehydrated and I can go out and sow them all in one go. Here are my butterfly ranunculus corns. Now, they are a funny shape. They're quite long as well, which is why we need the one litre containers so they don't get squished in. Usually I use a ramekin for soaking my ranunculus and enemies, but these are much bigger corns. As I say, they're going to need a one litre container. So I'm going to drop them in a bowl of water. All the corns are different shapes and sizes but all of the growth comes from the top, so it really doesn't matter. And they are quite fragile when they first arrive in this dehydrated state. So if one of the little legs drops off, don't worry about it at all. And you'll be absolutely shocked to see how much they swell up. So this is exactly the same variety and it has been in the water for literally 20 minutes. And you can see them changing already. So once they're fully hydrated, I've got another bowl here to show you. So these have been soaking overnight, so they're fully hydrated now. They're absolute whoppers, aren't they? Such funny shapes. Look at that. It looks like a crab. But as I say, all the roots and shoots are going to come from the crown, so their legs aren't that important. We'll plant them legs down like we do with the normal ranunculus. And once they're all swollen up, they are a lot more robust. So you can see I have made a start. I've counted out the ranunculus corms that I would like to sow tomorrow into their bowls, but I'm not going to soak them until the morning. They only take a few hours. So I'll get up in the morning. Before I have my cup of tea, I will fill these bowls up with water. The anemones, however, take longer to rehydrate. So I'm going to take the empty bowls and the packets into the house. And then tonight before I go to bed, I will put the anemones in to soak. And then tomorrow, about lunchtime, everything should be rehydrated and ready to start at the same time. So fast forward to the next morning and here are my corms that have been soaking overnight in a bowl of water. They've swollen up so much. I'm going to show you because you won't quite believe it. So these are the pastel, which I've got soaking in a bowl here. I'm going to open these up here put them out into my hand. So these were how they started and this is how they finished. I'm going to put them in my hand so you can see properly. There we go, what a difference. What a difference that has made. So these are the dehydrated corms and this is after they've had a bath and then this is three weeks later. So I've got a tray here, this side's the blue and white and this side is the pastel. Some of them came up quicker than others, but they are all awake now. We've got 100% germination. And literally, I've been filming this segment over the last couple of days, and every time I look at them, they've grown even more. 
I'm having <laughs> a morning soak. I've just got my picote on the go here. Literally, they swell up the minute they hit the water, don't they? So as soon as they start growing, the corm will disappear and it will turn into a plant. So the actual exact size of the corm really won't make much difference and they are quite large in any case. Also, just be careful when you're buying corms, you can often find that the bedding plant corms are impressively huge when actually the plants are gonna be very small. So they're just like seeds, not all corms are the same and don't be swayed by bigger is better because if it's a wrong variety, it won't be. Here are my corms, they have finished their rehydrating process and look at the vast difference, absolutely incredible. Now the worst thing that you can do with corms is to rehydrate them like this and then let them dry out. You might think to yourself, well I can just pop them back in a bowl and rehydrate them again, but they're a living thing, you can kill them. If you send them into shock like that by rehydrating them ready for growth, then dehydrating them, then rehydrating them again, you could end up suffocating them and then you might not have germination in your corms. So never start your corms unless you are ready to get on with planting them. Do what I do, just a few at a time, get your pots ready ahead of time, and then you just need five minutes to quickly grab your corms, pot them in the pots, and then we can leave them to get on with it. Here I've got my containers. I've got a nice pink dibber so you can see exactly what I'm gonna do. So you can, if you want to, just fill the pot halfway with compost, then put your corm in and backfill it. But we have rehydrated these pots overnight. So the compost is lovely and moist, but it's not soaking wet. So that's perfect for our corn. So I'm gonna make it nice and big so that I don't catch any of the legs when I go to lower the corn in. So if I just pop that in. Now you can, if you want to, just leave them slightly uncovered if you're an impatient gardener and you want to have a look to see how the shoots are doing. Just make sure that you water all around so that the compost has good contact with the corn because if there's just air next to the corn, then that could dry out. So just give it a nice firm and then perhaps just a little bit of water and then you can cover them completely if you want to. That's the way they should be. So we don't purposely leave them um, protruding from the top. That's not the idea. That's just in case you wanted to have a look. But otherwise, let me just do another one for you. Otherwise, the best way to plant them to keep them properly hydrated is actually to cover them. So let's pop. Oh, need a bigger hole than that. Let's just move that to one side. You can see how moist the compost is because it's holding in position. So I'll just lower the him in gently. There we go. See, it's a perfect size pop. And then I can just cover him all over. Give it a little bang to make sure there's no air pockets and don't forget your label push it down nice and deep, because sometimes what can happen is if you catch it, it can flick out. I've had that happen before. And then you've lost your label and you're not sure what it, what it said <laughs> until you find it. So you turn your greenhouse upside down looking for it. So tuck your label in nice and low so it doesn't go missing. Let's do the final one. Pop that in on the end, nice big hole. You can see this one is a slightly different size. He's shorter, but a bit fatter. They're all different, it doesn't matter. Once they start coming up, you'll see, you won't be able to tell which corn was which. So these are ranunculus. They look different, don't they? They're called butterfly ranunculus, and you can see why. The flowers look like little butterflies. They're singles, and there's many, many of them. Look at that. They're ever so easy to grow. Really, really sturdy. Excellent in pots. All three here are planted in pots. Let me go look at the stems. So you can cut this whole stem with all the flowers on it. And then you can put that in your bouquets and arrangements. Or you can just leave them on your patio to admire. The choice is yours.
If it's easier for you, you can just fill your pot up halfway with compost. Grab your corn. Remember, these are butterfly ranunculus, so they are much bigger plants. They're three times the size of the ordinary ranunculus. Cover them over. If you want to leave the compost just a little bit lower to start with, so you can see the shooting and not stop you fiddling with your pots, you can do that. But I'm just going to top mine up just to keep everything nice and moist. Give the pot a little tap, a lump there. Get rid of that. Okay, push a bit. Give the pot a little tap. Make sure it's settled all around the legs of your corn. Label in. And then up on the shelf with its brothers and sisters. Biggest worry with these great big pots is they will hold on to water for longer than trays. So you need to be very careful that you don't overwater your pots. If you're at all worried, even if your corn's in here, tip it out. And if the corn's in, just carefully remove it. I haven't got one in here. This is just an example. Carefully remove your corn. And you can see that compost is quite wet. So what I'm going to do is just add some dry. And another one. And then just mix it all in. And then the compost, the dry compost will mix with the wet and that will give you the consistency, which is much better for your corn. You can then refill your pot. There we go, I'll just do this one halfway. Take my butterfly and wing onto this corn, stand it in there, legs down, and then just fill in all around exactly the same as before. Give it a bang to make sure the compost is all settled around the corn, keeping it uniformly moist. Get your label, I'm going to push this in like I have the others, really nice and deep so it doesn't fall out for any reason. And then pop him up on the shelf with his brothers and sisters. And of course the rose shaped rhinoculus, their swelling up is just as dramatic. Look at those, absolutely fantastic. These are the cappuccino. I've taken a bag off the shelf. They're just the same ones as you've got. So please don't get obsessed with corn size. Obviously the butterfly are huge, but they are extremely expensive. But these, these are gonna turn into huge cut flowers. These are the ones that I use in my garden. And you'll find that the biggest corns actually belong to the bedding plants. So don't be fooled by corn size. It's all about the variety. And these varieties are my favorite. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Look at these ranunculus. This is the pastel, it's finally opened. Got more buds here, absolute whoppers. See that's ready to pop. And then this is the marshmallow back here. So I'm looking forward to those opening. The white ranunculuses are just doing so well. Absolutely beautiful as well so if you have only just sown yours then it is time to get excited they'll be slowly waking up look at the size of these huge marshmallow makes her entrance These charmellos have swollen up beautifully. Look at that. Fantastic, ready to go. And then my final job of the day is the anemones, which have plumped up beautifully and are ready now to go in their trays. These are my anemones and these are the blue and white. It doesn't look like there's much going on, does it? But don't worry, it's all going on below the soil surface. You can see we've got a little shoot coming here. Now don't do this at home. I've got plenty of spare corns, so I've done it for you just to put your mind at rest. Look at those roots. So though it's slow and not dramatic, they are coming. So the most important thing is to make sure your tray is moist enough to continue the waking up process, but not wet. If they're soaking wet, they haven't got 
anything really to get rid of the moisture. But they're soaking wet, then you could accidentally rot your corns before they've got a chance to complete the waking up process. So I need to be really careful putting these back in. If I push them in, I could snap off these delicate roots. But I thought it would be useful for you to see what's going on below the soil surface so you can have confidence in your corms. There we go, all safely tucked up. And now you've seen the corms. I am just gonna cover them up with some compost. I shan't water this compost because the uh, soil underneath was already quite moist. So the water will just transfer to the top and I'll water this in properly over the top next time the tray needs it. But it's heavy enough at the moment. As always, all the information is included in your handbook. This is a new 2023 full edition, as well as including all the comprehensive advice. The full edition also has a handy little checklist, which has got all of your flowering times written down for you.